Recording in progress. This is the Marriage Clinic International, your marriage, family, and relationship clinic. We are live every Saturday at 9 a.m. Saskatchewan time and 4 p.m. Nigeria time. And for now, 3 p.m. UK on Facebook and on Zoom and on YouTube after. The Zoom link is always posted every week on all our Facebook pages. Uh, find time to join us live any of these days to participate in our live discussions, make your contributions, and ask any of the questions you may have. Now, let us go to the discussion for today. The topic for today's discussion is ask first. Don't assume. Ask first. Don't assume. Assumptions is one of the issues that have scattered a lot of relationships today. A lot of marriages. A lot of families. Do not always assume that your wife, your husband, will like it or will not even like it. Or we react, or we not even react. On the other hand, do not also assume that she will be angry, or he will be disappointed. Ask first. Do not assume. Now, who and who in life is it compulsory for us to ask first before we start doing whatever, making any serious decision which we want to make? Who and who? Number one is God. Now, singles, listen to me. Singles, listen. Don't always assume God has approved the relationship or the trip or studying abroad. You guys are cutting and there's an opening abroad to go and study. Oh, both of you made the decision that, oh, you go and study. Please, don't always assume that God has approved it. May probably because of one or two signs that you have seen. Oh, probably because of one or two good things that have happened to you. Oh, probably because of one anything that somebody prophesied to you. No. Some of those signs could be coincidental. So, you ought to first of all be sure that God has approved it before you make the decision. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense if I must say that, that you assume that this thing is God approved and you jumped into the relationship and then started having problems, problems like, oh, the guy cannot impregnate a, a woman. Oh, the lady cannot conceive because these things, you don't know them. You're not supposed to know them before marriage. Oh, I have finished training her. And she left me and went for another man. Oh, he traveled abroad, even though we have courted for two years, for three years. And he abandoned me. And so on and so forth. These are things that have happened to different, sing different single persons. And many other ones. Time will fail us to talk about. So, don't always assume. Many people have regretted because of the issue of assuming or jumping into hasty conclu conclusion that, oh, hey, hey, God is in with this. God is in this. God has approved it. Take note of this. Those of us who are singles. Now, those of us who are married, always ask first. Ask God first. Before you make serious decisions. Some of these decisions are, number one, we just discussed a few. Number one is, before making a temporary separation from your spouse, Ask God first and make sure that God has approved it. Why? Because some temporary separations have ended up becoming permanent separation. People decided <coughs> to, you know, separate a little for a little while mm. to find greener pasture okay. abroad, you know, schooling <laughs> abroad, you know, schooling outside home. You might be in the same country, but you want to school outside home. You want to, or even walking outside home, as the case might be, walking abroad, making money abroad. People have, people have, and, and so on and so forth. I don't know where you are listening to us from. Whether, so, 
be, be sure that God has approved that this separation will take place. Otherwise, like I said, some people have made a temporary separation that became a permanent separation today. They've not been able to come together. And or some of those temporary separations became prelude to the permanent separation because the kind of things that happened during the time of that temporary separation now made it a kind of difficult for two of them to continue together again. So be married people, take note of this. Number two is before going into active politics, any type of politics, traditional politics, local politics, national politics, I don't know, before making such a decision, ask God first. Many have lost their family phones. Many have lost wife, lost husband, lost, lost kids, property, their faith, their sanity, their integrity. And, many, and the worst of it all, many have lost their lives on the process of pushing a political agenda. Some people from the part of the world I came from have lost their lives just contesting to be the traditional ruler. I mean traditional ruler, local chief, local chief. Some people have lost their lives. Some have lost their husband. Some, some, some please, their wife, as the case might be. So before you make any decision to go into any type of active politics, ask God first and be sure that God is approving that you will go on to do it. Otherwise, you will be like Moses who made a hasty conclusion to think that, that God has approved that he will be the one bringing, delivering the children of Israel. So, don't make the mistake of thinking that you are the Moses of your people. You are the Moses. You are their deliverer. Even in the Bible, the Bible confirms that Moses thought, concluded, according to the word of God, in Acts chapter 7, verses 23 to 28, the Bible says he, 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 he concluded inside of him that, that his people would have understood that God would deliver them by his hands. He didn't ask God. Even if you are the one, he didn't ask God how and when. God said Israel would live at 400, and 400 years. When he was 40, he started the assignment on his own. Probably because one or two things would have made him to think like that. Maybe because of his upbringing, his royal upbringing. Maybe because of his birth, the circumstances that surrounded his birth. He said, oh, God's hand would have been upon me for me to have been brought up this way. So I'm the deliverer of my people. So he started the work. And how did he do it? He started by killing one Egyptian. Before he could, could even go to the second person, <laughs> he was already on his way out of the land. So, and you know one of the things that I, must, I wouldn't forget that happened? One of them, whom he helped the other day, by the time he was trying to help him the, the following day, said, ah, brother, why are you fighting? You know, the same person, the same person asked him the question, who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Who made you? See, before you start assuming a ruler and a judge over a people, be sure that it was God who made you the ruler and a judge over us. But do you know why I like the story of Moses? After some time, after another 40 years, when he has finished with the Lord, when he has had the Lord, when the Lord has spoken to him, when he has concluded with the Lord, he came back. They still ask him the same question. Korah, Abiram, and Dathan, they ask him, why are you acting as though you are a prince over us? <laughs> you know what happened? This time, those people were not lucky. You know what? God showed up because God was with him. God showed up and the ground opened up and swallowed them alive. And not only that, the other 250 men who supported them were also consumed by fire. So, brothers and sisters, I don't know who is listening to me. You have to be sure. Because this case is the case that happens to all of us. This is what happens to us. God might want you in politics. He might want you in any leadership role which you need to contest. But it must be his way and it must be 
at his own at time. His time. His own way and at his own time. Mark this too. His own way and at his time. Otherwise, like Moses, you will be saw, you will soil your hand with blood. You will soil your hands with blood. Moses soiled his hand with the, in, the, the hand of an innocent Egyptian who was just having issues with an, another Israelite. That was not God's way. That was not God's way. God knew that they were slaves. They were vulnerable. They couldn't fight. How can you fight those who are your masters? God knew that. So God didn't want them to fight. God wanted to fight for them. And that was why in Exodus chapter 14, the Bible said the Lord will fight for you and you will hold your peace. God wanted to fight for them and they hold their peace. Not that they will fight. So you have to ask God when and how. What is your way? How do you want this thing to be done? And when do you want it to be done? In fact, let me tell you something. You need to ask God. Why? Because God has all it takes to take, lift you up there. If you follow his way. So don't like think, oh, if I, if I follow God's way, it cannot. No, God has all it takes to take you up there. Now, two other ones and I'm done. Who and who are you supposed to ask? Rather, please, one and what are you supposed to ask God first for? Before having another child, if you're already married. You know, this one, this one looks, it looks somehow, you know, it looks like, it looks, it looks strange. But then it is true. Before ever you and your husband or your wife, you think about having another child. Sit down and discuss it with God. Ask God. Tell God the sex of the baby you guys want. Ask God also to make provisions. Tell God you want a child that is strong. A child that will be a destiny child. A child that will be powerful, that will carry favor. A child that will be healthy, that will be strong, and so on and so forth. Don't go and start the thing. In fact, our usual thing is that we always start. Mm-hmm. When we have finished the matter, mm-hmm. then we will now... So, there is pregnancy. You praise God. So, there is pregnancy. Then you take God say, this pregnancy yeah, that is here, afraid. make it a male or make it a female. It doesn't work that way. See, the Bible said in the book of Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah, say, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I've already known you. So that is to say, before ever a child is formed in the womb, God already have known. So you can't tell God to change a child that is already formed. It doesn't work that way. And even another one is that people now go to scan, scan or scan, and tell you there is a female child because they're looking for a female child. I don't know how it happens. Most times when people are looking for a female child, when they go for scan, scan will tell them it's a female child. When people are looking for a male child, they go to scan. Scan will tell them it's a male child. And when the baby comes forth, it will be opposite. See, ask God. Discuss it with God. Even before you start having anything to do with your husband or with your wife. This is the baby we want. This is the sex of the baby we want. Then tell him, say, God, God, make provision for this baby. No, do you know, it looks absurd. It looks disappointing that we as God's children, especially, you, you have a pregnancy you are children of God, and the pregnancy comes. You don't have money to take care of the child. Who gave you the pregnancy? God, when once God makes a, a, a God gives us a vision, God makes provision for the vision. So if God gives you a child, if God is, gives you a child because you, you started with him, God will also do what? Make provision for the child. <laughs> That's what happened in the case of Moses. That we just God who made provision for Moses to be brought up because God was the one who brought Moses into the womb of his mother. So discuss it with God. In fact, this will even help you to reduce anxiety. When God has said no, you, you are saying, God, we want a child. God said, No, 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 it's not, not yet time. Not yet so time. you are not afraid. People are calling you bad. You say, No problem. God says it's not yet time. And you know the word of God cannot fail. So because of that, you believe him. Now, let me run. Because of the, the fourth one is, before accepting a new friend, whether it's a family friend or a personal friend, husbands listening to me, wives listening to me, kids listening to me, any other person, young people who want to, who, who are, listen to me. Before accepting any new friend into your life, please, I beg you in the name of the Lord, Sit down, ask God first. This person wants me to be his friend. This person wants me to be her friend. Business partner. God, business partner, everything, all of them. Yeah. Please, ask God first. Life partner. Ask, ask God, God first. first. Ask God first. Why? Because, hmm, 
some of the problems that people have had today in the, are having today in marriage. We are the friends that we are received, accepted five years ago, ten years ago, some even 15 years ago. See, some of the deaths that occur today, that, some of the deaths that occur today, we are the friends that people received in their lives 15 years ago, even 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 1 year ago. How? How I wish that you ask God. Maybe your husband is dead, now your wife is dead, or your child is dead. How I wish you ask God before you accepted that friend. Because if you have asked God, God would have told you that in 5 years time, this is the person that will kill you. In, in 10 years time, this is the person that will kill your wife. This is the person that will rape your wife. See? Crazy. No, no, look at them. Do you remember? See, how can... You accept, say, this person is my best man. On the day, night to your wedding, your best man slept with your bride to be. Which type of friend is that one? If you have asked God, God would have made you know this person will destroy even your marriage when the time comes. So, please listen. I wish, I say again, that you ask God, maybe that your husband wouldn't have died now, that your wife wouldn't have even died, that your son, business, you that know? some of the money you yeah. lost today, you wouldn't have lost them, you that your child probably would, would mistakes, have died. Yeah. Yes, some of the people that brought us into problem, yeah. made us na into na sacrificing our children, into dying, our children dying, maybe because of where you were in different ship, you couldn't respond to your child, you couldn't respond to your husband, you couldn't respond to your wife, and the person died. Now, that's for this. <laughs> now, those of us that our wives and our husbands are alive, please take note of this. And our kids, too. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> take note of this. Before you start accepting any friend into your life, ask God. Now, kids, listen. Young people, listen to me. You might think that you are, because this is a family program, so you might think that you are three years, okay, let's say five years, ten years. 15 years, you are accepting a friend. Please, if you are hearing this message now, ask God first. Ask God first. Because some of the friends that you are accepting now will bring your downfall in 10 years' time, in 15 years' time, in 5 years' time. Kids, listen. Because that boy or that girl will later become a drug addict, could be later become a drug addict. And you wouldn't know. And he visits you. Or he's running from police and comes to you. And then that's the day the police will apprehend you. And you cannot in any way exonerate yourself that you're not a culprit. Listen, listen, listen. And the one that will even bring you into taking drugs, the one that will even make you become a strange man to your wife, who you have loved before, a strange woman, a, who, to your husband. Whom, listen, everybody, listen. Before you accept any friend, before you accept any friend, please ask God first. No matter how holy the person looks now, that person can be your problem tomorrow. And not only that, if some of the people that you're also despising now, you don't want them to be your friend. Mm -hmm. You don't know that they are the ones that God has brought into your life to bring your lifting by tomorrow. Your lifting are in their hands. Some of them will become the governors of tomorrow. Some of them will become the presidents of tomorrow. Some of them will become the senators of tomorrow. Some of them will become the business gurus that will connect you, connect your generation to lifting tomorrow. So, don't assume, don't always see somebody as good now, as a holy man, as a holy man of God, as a bad man. Ask God first before you start accepting a friend. As a person, as a young person, as a husband, as a wife, as a family friend. So, this is our family friend. Ask God first. Before you accept one to help you. Now, the second group of just one, of, one or two minutes. Have, the second group of people you will ask before ever you make serious decisions. The second group of person, or the person is your spouse. Now, if you are going to make some of these decisions, like the decision like bringing in a family member family home, member into your house, or a family friend to come and pass anybody, a night, anybody, anybody else, else. Yeah. whether it's one night. Or 10 nights or one year. Did you ask your spouse? Ask your spouse first. Some people have brought in their friends. Their friends ended up sleeping with your wives. Ended up sleeping with their husband. Ended up molesting their children. Ended up raping their daughters. Ended up raping, raping their, their son. And their sons, as the case might be. Ended up teaching their children. It could be uncle. It could be cousin. Ended up teaching the kids how to take drugs. Ended up teaching the kids how to be wayward. That big auntie. Before you start bringing the person into the house, ask God first. 
ask, please, ask, ask your, your spouse, spouse first. After God, ask your spouse. Because God has a way, especially my women, God has a way of telling you, I don't like this person's face. You might think that she's, she hates your people, yeah, or she hates your friends. Because when you have asked God, mm. the next person to ask is your spouse. your spouse. And God is definitely going to re respond to you through that your spouse. Yeah. Sometimes the answer you're looking for is even in the lips of your spouse. Mm. You, you are coming to ask him or her, and she is saying, no, this is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. God has given you the answer you need. Mm -hmm. He has answered that prayer, that meeting you had with him. The answer is right there before your spouse. Mm -hmm. But if you don't even come to ask your spouse, how are you even going to get the message mm. how can you be here sometimes it's even our kids you ask them mm. you want to embark on a journey you want to do a vacation without them mm. can you ask them mm. ask them first ask your spouse ask your kids mm. one of them may be telling you oh daddy i don't think this is the right time for this journey mm. and you like ah you know is a child's talk they, they god can speak to you through them as mm. well you know don't embark on this kind of business don't embark on that kind of journey mm. when you ask for us you will be able to hear god through the speak to you through them but when you don't ask them you just decide you wake up and make a decision take decisions just because you feel you're a man mm. or just because you feel you're matured enough or you, because you're the one calling uh, paying the bills you're not talking to anyone you're just deciding on your own and acting it out and then there is trouble that is coming out of it or you go into the business and you're duped mm -hmm. you know you go into that, that, that journey camp. you go in and back on that you journey family you, you never return you didn't ask questions. Mm. So it's always good for us to ask our spouses. Thank you, baby girl. You already have gone to the third, no, second point. Please, if, if you are working and you are, you are doing the kind of job that people travel, please, before you accept traveling, any of those, making all those trips, ask your spouse first if he or she can handle it at that particular time. Yeah. Ask. Otherwise, you might travel married and you come back you don't have any marriage again. See, listen, you might travel married and come back not having a marriage again. Kids now, she has already added them. Ask first and get the approvals because it is very, very important so that you won't go and come back you don't have a marriage again. You have another person. She may be telling be, you this is not the right, not the right time, time for the journey, you know? It's not the right and time. And she has her reasons why she's talking. Yes. And you feel and that... And you around uh, me now. Yeah, and you feel that, oh, yeah. the money is involved, my boss... They, that my your job? boss is sending you, you go for your job you and come go. back you have no yeah, marriage that your again. boss is sending you does not mean you should go <laughs> that the money involved is too much is, yeah. does not also mean you should accept mm -hmm. money is not everything mm -hmm. you know some persons have you know gone for money and then ended up losing, losing marriage or precious, losing daughter losing precious, son you know so why should what are we going to gain if we do that so it's you usually see, good to ask. These for. things are very, very important. I traveled. I, there was one of one of the trips I made, and by the time I came, my small boy was almost gone, if not because of God. I'm telling you. So that's an example. Then finally, it, before you, before you, she, she has already talked about it. Before you go into any investment, before you use family funds that are that are maybe under your custody, before you before you start any new project. Don't say you want to surprise her. <laughs> Ask her first. Because even before you go into full-time ministry, those of us who, are, who want to go into full-time ministry, discuss it with him or her. Because you need their support for the success of all this. So, in conclusion, dear brothers and sisters, ask first. Don't assume. Oh, what a sweet life. What a sweet relationship. What a sweet marriage. What a sweet family. Youths, young people, what a sweet future you have. If you learn, learn how, how to always ask God and the family members, husband, wife, first before making serious moves yeah. in your life. I'll stop here. Don't be in a hurry. Let's not always be in a hurry. I have, you know, been vic victims of many occasions mm. of being in a hurry to take decisions because you want something. And at the end of the day, you see yourself losing out in that thing. Mm. It's always good to be patient. To ask for God, ask from God, ask Him first. Give God time. Don't be in a hurry. Ah, if God does not give me answer, no, no, no. Anything that is coming speedily to you to make decisions cannot really be from God. Mm -hmm. They want you to be involved in that business, and they say you don't have time. We don't have time. Time is not on our side. We want you to give us a yes or a no now. No, the person would even give you time to go and pray. 
Proposals are coming your way as a single person, mm -hmm. and they're not. The guy is not giving you time to go and think about it, to go and pray about it. He said he wants you. He's in a hurry to wed you in the next three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not giving you time. He everything is sharp, sharp. He wants everything to be done now, 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 as in now, now. There's no time to waste. Mm -hmm. It cannot really be from God. Mm -hmm. He should give you time. You need time to go ask from God. Ask God. Should I go into? Should I accept this proposal? God will tell you accept or not don't accept and don't also assume that somebody is in love with you how do you even know that the person loves you don't assume that he loves you she loves you did god tell you that did you ask did you see well you know have you heard from him don't assume that he is in love with me don't also assume that he's going to marry you and you have been with a lady you know you like you love you care you you, you like everything about this person it could be either ways the guy or the or the lady and you've not opened your mouth to make a proposal. You've not asked her first. Will you really like me to be your future husband, future partner? You've not asked the lady. You are just being nice unnecessarily. Both of you are being nice to each other. Nobody is saying anything. And you are assuming the lady is for you. You are assuming she's going to say yes to you. You don't even know if she's in, into another relationship. You don't know if she wants to marry now. And you're wasting your time assuming that you have her. And then the day you feel you are ready, you will come up and you discover that her wedding or she, you are receiving a wedding card from her. Yeah. Don't assume that this person is my wife. Mm -hmm. You have seen a lady and you are following her, doing everything for her. Don't just assume. You are trading her, paying school fees, you know. Whatever that will give you heartbreak, heartache tomorrow. Don't get involved. Ask first, do you really love me for a future husband, a future wife? Yes. Find out first if that person will be interested in your kind of person or not. Don't just assume and start spending your money or start enticing the family and her or him with uh, your resources, trying to intimidate them so that when the time comes, you say, after all I did for you. Don't assume that the lady will say yes to you. Ask. You have to open your mouth. Ask. Why did the Bible say we should ask and it shall be given unto us? Okay, why don't we just stay without asking? Eh? You say, call upon me. Call up God, say, call upon me. I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things you don't even know about. You know Why can't we ask? The same way you assume that my husband should take care of me and you are in need. And he's not the type that doesn't do anything without you asking. Mm. If you have known that this is how he operates, please ask him. Mm -hmm. Ask him for money first. Don't assume he, he should give he you. Should, yeah. Why is he not giving you? Mm. And you are, you are not happy that he's not giving you. Mm. You did not ask. Some of them, if you don't ask, they're not going to give you. I'm not saying you shouldn't give your wife money mm -hmm. without her asking. Or even help out your husband without him asking for help in a country where you guys pay lots of bills, you know. Don't wait for him to ask you to support. You don't wait, I know, but even though you're not supposed to wait to be asked for, but please, you that is in the States, in that shoe, learn how to ask. Because if you don't ask, how can you receive? If you don't ask someone, how will you know what's in the person's mind? Mm. You will just be getting angry unnecessarily. You're just mad and sad at over someone. But the person doesn't even know what you need. Can you open your mouth and ask? You're a child. You need something from your parents. Ask them. Let them know what you want before you conclude that my parents are not even taking care of me. They and don't, don't me. also assume that you are loved in that relationship. Mm -hmm. It's also good to ask, do you really love me? After all, Jesus even asked Peter, do you still love me? Mm -hmm. Do you love me more than this? Mm -hmm. So from time to time, also ask your spouse. Don't assume that that woman is still with you. Mm -hmm. She may be living with you physically, but her heart is far away from you. So from time to time, make sure she's with you. Make sure both of you are on the same, you know, the same page, the same, the same level, at the same, having the same agreement, the same unity. For how can two work together when there is no agree, agreement, when there is no unity? How can both of you work together? Mm. You have to ask. There is a proposal you're bringing at the table. You have to ask her, what do you think about this? Should we go on? Don't assume that, hey, my wife likes everything I said. Mm. Mm. Uh, she takes everything. My husband accepts everything I say. Is a, is a problem. That, there is a problem there. Because somebody may not be speaking up because of his dying in silence. Allow the person ask. Let the person air his view. And then you, you use whatever the person is saying to know whether you're going back to the Lord in prayer or whether you're working more, you know, to get the person's attention. Agreement in that particular thing is usually very, very important that, that we learn how to ask first from God and first, second from our spouse and third, if I may add, from our kids because they are part of the family. We should always carry them along. 
Thank you for being part of today's program. Uh, for a full package of this message and many other life transforming messages for your marriage, your relationship, and uh, your family, you can visit our YouTube channel or any of our Facebook, uh, our Facebook, the Facebook page of the Marriage Clinic International. Uh, if, and if you have any concerns, you have any questions uh, for prayer and counseling, uh, you can always reach us through our email at the marriage clinic international at gmail dot com or through our mobile plus one six three nine 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 four five four four one or plus one three zero six eight eight zero two three five one or you can inbox us through our Facebook or through Messenger. We're going to give you all the necessary answers you require. Let us pray. Father, thank you for today. And for what you've done already thank you for the admonitions and the advice today help us O lord to take heed to all of them that lord the enemy will no longer have his way in our life and in our marriages in our family to break it up to destroy us because we are not lord at a lot to hear what you will say help us lord those who are already in such problems because of not Asking you first before accepting new friends, entering new projects, new investments. Father, we pray for such families. Some have lost family funds. Lord, that you will help them, show them the way out. Some have even lost husband and wife because of joining politics, you know, because of all these traditional issues. Father, we pray for you that you help them. Some already have involved themselves into many other dirty things. Lord, I pray that you will deliver them and set them free thank you father for the young ones who are listening to us right now lord this is more beneficial in a way to them help them oh god in choosing new friends friends that will be beneficial to them as they grow up thank you father for answer for in jesus gracious name we have prayed amen, amen. if you are listening to us i don't radio tv or cable or here right now you have not given your life to Jesus Christ. Can you just put your hand on your chest and ask the Lord to come into your life? Say Jesus to come into your life. He died for you. Say Jesus come into my life. I acknowledge that you died for me and you paid the price for all my sins. Today I come to you and I accept that all my sins that you paid for are washed away. I receive salvation. I receive salvation into my life. And I want to thank you because I am saved. I am born again. I am changed. I receive the power of your spirit to live for you from now henceforth. Thank you, Lord, for answering me. Amen. We we'll pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we we'll commit all that have prayed that prayer into your hands. Those who I even trying to regret right now. Father, deliver them from the, 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 the hold of regret and the guilt of mistakes. <coughs> Father, set them free. Father, those that their sins are pricking their hearts. They say, oh, this message has touched me. Father, deliver them. Father, those, oh Lord, that are rededicating their lives. They have known you before, Robert. They have messed up because of not asking you first. And they are rededicating their lives right now. They are saying, God, please, could you forgive me? Father, we pray for them from this altar. We pray that you forgive them. Pray that you will wash them. We pray, Lord, that you will set them free from whatever entanglement, from whatever hold, from whatever captivity, from whatever problem that they have found themselves in because of the mistakes of not asking first. Father, we pray, Lord, that you will help every family out there. Lord, help every husband, every wife out there. Help every child out there. Help every marriage out there. Give them the grace to conform to your idea about family life, about marriage, and about relationship. Young people who are coming into marriage, Lord, we pray that you will strengthen them, pray that you will help them, pray that you will provide for them, pray that you will, Lord, give them all that is at the desires of their heart that are good. Above all, guide them well. <coughs> And bless their future homes. Thank you, Abba Father, for answer. Lord, thank you for all that have been part of this program. Bless them. And bless their marriages as well. 
that all that are part of this, none of them shall have any, that none of them shall the devil walk or succeed in their families. Thank you, Father, for answer. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' gracious name, <coughs> we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And God bless you. See you again. Same time next week. Next week, 9 a.m. Saskatchewan, uh, Saskatchewan time. And 4 p.m. Nigeria for those in Africa. Bye. Happy weekend. Bye. Bye. Recording.